JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for April the 22nd. I am Haralabos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way, in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial, financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against uh, most of the other major currencies on Thursday and during the Asian session Friday. The main losers were, uh, were the Kiwi, the Aussie and, and, the, and the Canadian dollar, while the currencies against which uh, the greenback lost uh, ground were uh, the Yen and the Euro. Now the strengthening of, uh, of, of the greenback and the weakening of the risk-linked Aussie, Kiwi and Looney suggest uh, a switch to risk off at some point yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that although most major European indices traded in the green, all three of Wall Street's uh, main indices fell more than 1%. Nasdaq actually lost 2.07%. The pessimism uh, rolled over into the Asian session uh, today as well. Among the indices uh, under our radar, only China Shanghai Composite uh, gained um, uh, somewhat. Now, responsible for uh, forcing market participants to reduce uh, their risk exposure appears to be Fed Chair Jerome Powell, who confirmed the Fed's willingness to move aggressively in order to curb high inflation. He said that a 50 percent, excuse me, uh, he said that a 50 basis points rate increase will be on the table at the upcoming gathering, and added that it would be appropriate to be moving a little more quickly, reinforcing expectations over a triple hike in June. Following those remarks, market participants who have been already fully pricing in a 50 basis points hike in. Um, in May, uh, increased their bets over a triple, a triple hike in June, pushing the probability up to 78.4% from slightly above 50 ahead of Powell's speech. They even see a 70.3% chance for another 50 basis points hike to be delivered in July. In other words, they see the rate rising by 1.75% in the next three months. It seems that such an increase is in such a short period of time is too much to bear for equity investors, and that's why we saw them uh, selling after Powell's remarks. Remember that higher interest rates mean higher borrowing costs for companies, but also lower present values for high growth firms like tech giants, who are valued uh, based, on based on discounted expected cash flows for the months and years ahead. Now, as for today, market attention is likely to turn to the preliminary PMIs for the month of April from the Eurozone, the UK and the US. Both Eurozone's manufacturing and services indices are expected to have slid, but to have remained above the boom or bust zone of 50, which separates expansion from contraction. This is likely to take the composite PMI down to 54 from 54.9. Now, further slowdown in Eurozone's economic activity is likely to confirm the notion that the ECB may need to proceed more, more carefully with raising interest rates than some other major central banks like the Fed, the Bank of England and the Bank of Canada. Although there were reports yesterday that the ECB may eventually decide to hike interest rates in July, the increasing expectations over an ultra-aggressive stance by the Fed still, point, uh, still points to um, to a wide divergence between uh, those two major central banks, the ECB and the Fed. 
Thus, we still see the path of least resistance for euro dollar as being to the downside. There are no forecasts uh, for the UK PMIs, while in the US expectations are for a fractional decline in the manufacturing index and no change in the services one, with both indices staying near the 58 uh, handle, which is nowhere uh, near of uh, changing expectations around the Fed's uh, policy plans. Now, uh, besides the economic agenda, uh, investors will also keep uh, an eye on the political scene and the second round of uh, the French elections, of the French elections with, with the, vo with the vote uh, taking place on Sunday. The opinion polls suggest a 55% uh, support for incumbent President Emmanuel Macron, who appeared more convincing in Wednesday's TV debate, against 45% for challenger Marine Le Pen. This points to a tight race on Sunday. Le Pen is a Eurosceptic candidate, and although she ditched past ambitions for a Frexit or getting out of the Euro, a potential victory of hers could mean a 118 degree spin for France from being a driving force for European integration to being more cautious on EU, de on EU decisions and, pl and plans. With that in mind, we suspect that the Le Pen victory may be negative for the Euro, while the opposite may be true in case Macron comes out victorious. However, we don't believe that the potential rebound could also signal a trend reversal, as the common currency could continue feeling the heat of the uncertainty surrounding the war in Ukraine, the slowdown in Eurozone's economic activity, and the divergence in monetary policy between the ECB and the other major central banks like the Fed and the Bank of England. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly market out excuse me to the weekly market outlook webinar which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. At this point I need to let you know and uh, I need to repeat that um, we will not have a weekly market outlook webinar on Monday and we will also not have a daily market review on uh, Tuesday. The next weekly market outlook webinar will be on uh, May the 2nd, while the next daily market uh, review video will be held uh, this Wednesday. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again on Wednesday. JFT, just fair and direct.